Is it possible to thrive in an age of conflict and get it done with power and grace? It sure is. I'm Karen Valencic and this video is a third of a third part series where I am reviewing William Urey's new book, Possible, and I am showing how his concepts weave together with my book, Spiral Impact, The Power to Get It Done with Grace. So I have arranged these three videos around what Yuri calls victories. The first one is going to the balcony. The second one is building a golden bridge. And his third victory, which this video is about, is engaging the third side. So, you know, when you've got a conflict, it might be between two people or two countries. Whenever there's that conflict, it doesn't just uh, impact the people that are in the conflict, it impacts everyone around them. And that's why the third side is so important in terms of dealing with the conflict and finding some kind of resolution for it. He divides each of these segments into three powers, and the three powers in engage the third side is one, to host, two, to help, and three, to swarm. So first, let's talk about helping. William Urey is an anthropologist by education, and it should be known that he has looked at indigenous tribes in terms of what, how they deal with conflict. And he notes there's one tribe called the Kiwa. Part of their culture is when they have two people that have conflict, that the families and friends of each of those individuals um, intervene to help calm things down. There's also South Africa. In South Africa, um, Desmond Tutu talked about this as well. And, uh, there's a term called Ubuntu. Ubuntu means that we are, we are all one and we're all together in this. And there is no exclusion. There's only inclusion. And he cites a story in here back from the King Arthur days of a young knight going on a a quest to find the the Holy Grail. And after 10 years, a castle appears and he walks in the castle and there's an old wizened king sitting at the table with the grail in front of him. As the story goes, there was a magic question that he needed to ask. And the magic question was, tell me what ails you. That's what the young knight said. And then he listened to the, the wizened king and then the king generously gave him the grail. But that's an example of being the witness of what somebody else is going through. That is the part that's about hosting the conflict, is to, to be witness of what is happening. Yuri has a quote that I'm gonna put up on the screen here too. It's really good. Ultimately, the hardest work we do as human beings is to face our fears and listen to others whom we may disagree. Think about that when you've been in a situation where you disagree wholeheartedly to listen, set aside your fears, nobody's gonna make you do something, and listen. That again is hosting, hosting the conflict. And then he goes on to say that, that hosting is actually a true act of compassion because when you listen and you're empathetic, so you're putting yourself where that person is, but compassion takes it a step further. And that step further is that the compassion wants to help you, help you move on to the next thing. That's a nice segue onto the next power, which is to help. In this power of help, I'm actually going to speak solely to my work in Spiral Impact. One of our key tenets is Two, turn your statements into questions, acknowledgements, or both, and avoid the question, why? And when you stop making statements and you only ask those questions, you start to learn. And when you ask those questions of another person, they begin to share, and so often they can come to their own conclusions about the conflict themselves. It's incredibly transformative. So remember that when you're in a conflict, turn your statements into questions, acknowledgements, or both. And I actually went through that in one of the earlier segments, Building the Golden Bridge. I talked more about that in detail. I'm not gonna repeat all that here. 
So then the final power is to swarm. And swarm is where you get a lot of people, not just one, but you get a lot of people with an interest in whatever that conflict is, and they come together to help solve it. He gives several examples of how when you have communities that have gang violence, that they engage other people that have been in gangs, but they're no longer in the gang, and they become interrupters. So they are swarming the conflict, swarming the gang violence, and they're able to do that because there's more than one of them. They have that experience where they can host and connect with those people. So as I'm recording this, in August of 2024, Russia just released 16 American citizens in exchange, of course, for, for one of their prisoners. But that was a process that would not have ever happened had they not swarmed it with a bunch of different countries coming together. So swarming is, is really bringing out all the powers of, of people relative to the interest of whatever it is you're trying to solve. So that is it. If you haven't seen the other two videos, I encourage you to go back and listen to them, watch them. Needless to say, I really love this book, Possible, and I will be recommending it to people, and I've had clients read it already that really enjoyed it. He goes into much more details with his stories around how he has applied these concepts in some really sticky situations. I highly recommend this book and of course I highly recommend my book as well and now I have an online membership site where you can go through this book step by step how to master conflict. You can actually earn a blue belt in conflict mastery. What about that? Uh, but go to conflictmasterycourse.com Dot com and you can sign up there and receive the first lesson for free and there's also online coaching that goes with that as well so check it out and of course I would love it if you would subscribe and like this video it would be really helpful for me it would be encouraging for me it would help me <laughs> so until next time thank you very much bye bye